What's up guys, it's Sean here with the Sean Adeli Book Channel and today I have for you one of, in my opinion, the best fantasy series I have ever read and a definite must read as far as it goes. This is as S tier as it gets when it comes to books, um, but I have not enjoyed a book series this much in years the depth, the character development, uh, there's only one person we're talking about, and it is Joe Abercrombie's First Law Trilogy. Uh, this is a bit of a unique story, um, a little bit of a background, so you have an idea about Joe Abercrombie. Uh, Joe, Aber Joe is known as the Prince of the Grim Dark genre. He is absolute master at showing the, a world where... The characters are very gray. You're not dealing with saints over here. It's not characters that you exactly identify with because they're all quite questionable people as far as who they are. But the, the level of character development that he does is by far beyond so much that I've ever seen in the... Uh, fantasy genre, his ability to write interpersonal communication, his ability to write interactions between people of the opposite sex. It's absolute S-class. Um, the uh, criticism that these books have is on plot, plot development. Uh, if you think about like, okay, what exactly happened in this book? You may argue that not a lot happened. However, the story is more about the development of the characters and he does it so, so well that it is beyond anything I've ever read. Uh, just so you know a little bit about the world, uh, it is held in a medieval, post-medieval type age. We haven't really hit that industrial revolution yet. We're pretty much on the cusp of an industrial revolution. Uh, no gunpowder or weaponry of any of that kind castles cities game of thrones-esque era uh but the way he's written this story is actually very interesting there is this trilogy and there's about three or four standalone books i believe there's four standalone books that are either prequels or other parts of the world and or short stories that all tie in to this huge world this huge magnum opus style thing think of if you're thinking of it in terms of let's say game of thrones it would be as if somebody's uh explaining each house as an individual story in each part of the world in a different way and it's done absolutely fantastically uh specifically in um the first law with and the blade itself which is the book that uh, we are reviewing today. This story it follows four, four characters. You have uh, Captain West, you have Giselle, Glockta, favorite fantasy character of all time, is Glockta, uh, Pharaoh, and the Bloody Nine, or Logan. Uh, five characters. And it's a point of view series. You switch off chapters from one to the other. They do group up at some point and you kind of experience the world through these people's eyes. And the way each of them develops in this story is by far, as far as developmental work, I honestly can't say I've read a story that has even close to this level as far as character development and progression. So that was kind of my spoiler free version of it. As far as like quality of the book, it's a nine and a half to 10 out of 10. I loved everything about this book. I loved everything about this series. Just pick it up, read it. Let me know what you guys think. Now for spoilers. Oh my God. <laughs> this series, holy shit. Uh, we'll talk about it character by character. I'll do my least favorite, Pharaoh. Not my cup of tea. Uh, these insanely angry, revenge-filled characters ugh, just don't have a lot in it for me. Um, I was honestly more interested in 
uh, Yoe, and I thought Yoe was really carrying her um, for, during the parts that he was in the story. Um, but uh, she does give you a good world, good um, idea of what uh, the world of the Gurkish exactly is, and their racism is obviously very evident uh, in the interactions with her. Um, and her relationship with Logan is actually very interesting. And speaking of which, let's get on to Logan. Logan is by far my favorite character after Glockta. Uh, he's so interesting. The whole bloody nine is one of the most amazing concepts. This dual split personality that he has that all of a sudden I, uh, listened to the audio as well, uh, during the exercise and, Oh my god, the audio that he changes his voice to the bloody nine. It's fantastic. I absolutely love the level of there's like music build up when he becomes the bloody nine. It's like this evolution. It's absolutely fantastically written because when he's Logan and when he's fine, he's just a normal go happy do 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 guy who you knew obviously had a dark past. Um, someone who's called the Bloody Nine is obviously not someone you want exactly to be best friends with. Or maybe it is. So, but I would totally be best friends with Logan. That would be awesome. Beat, beat me up. Might end up dead. It'd be worth it. Why not? Um, this has been one of the most fun characters, in my opinion. I love his, uh, the talking to spirits is fascinating. Uh, I really hope there's more development on what the spirits, how he developed this power, because that's really interesting to me. I'm, I love lore and his interaction with Baez. Baez is such an interesting character. You just cannot tell. Are you a good guy? Like you're obviously like the person that I was thinking about was Merlin. Like he's just so Merlin, but just old and grumpy Merlin, which is just Merlin pretty much. So, and that's like a perfect, uh, the Gandalf style figure but it's a Gandalf style figure that you're questioning whether or not he's good or bad and that's really interesting um then we have uh I'm, gonna, I'm saving the best for last uh Giselle Giselle was a character that god he is you're just meant to hate him those first four or five chapters he's just so diabolically horrible to deal with we've all had a Giselle in our lives, this like pretty boy jock, jock type that just thinks shit he shits gold and that he's better than everybody else. Ugh, it's such a horrible thing to read, but he becomes better. He becomes a lot better actually as the story progresses. You start liking Giselle more and more as he starts to improve on himself, starts developing himself, uh, starts becoming a better person. Um, he actually does become one of uh, my favorite characters of the story. And I absolutely loved him. Uh, he was fantastic throughout the story. Um, his relationship with Artie, questionable. It's very questionable. Uh, the whole dynamic between him and Glockta, that semi-rivalry almost in a way uh, that he has and that mutual hatred. Um the I loved the scene uh, where there was a little thing that I noticed in the book where after he wins the tournament that Baez let him win, obviously, and made him win, his dad freaks out when he sees Baez. And I'm like, okay, okay, Giselle is someone. What is, what's going on here? Baez won't just randomly do this. There's a master plan involved. And so uh, Giselle, very, very interesting. Um, now that he's joined the crew and we're gonna see what happens in book two but the we'll do west now west interesting character he's obviously the most like immediately likable character up until he beats up his sister <laughs> which was a little dark to say the least um that part really i was like i love west west is so good wait what are you doing west calm down relax no 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 going back now god oh that was really bad um his relationship with Artie is very fascinating that brother sister dynamic Artie being just this drunk alcoholic um who's just 
had a very, very difficult childhood, obviously, as has West, um, and just their experiences together. Very traditional, almost, growing up with abusive parents uh, and the PTSD and the role on effects it has, that that has had in development. Um, however, West is obviously a character that you're meant to resonate with. He's uh, like the underdog, the champion. He's the one who, against all odds, challenges everybody and does the good thing because it's the good thing to do. It's always good to have a moral guy, guy who's good, but has a temper, very bad temper. And that perfectly segues uh, into my favorite character of fantasy. Glockta is so incredible as a cripple who you think, how could a cripple who's a torturer be the favorite, your favorite character in fantasy? But he's just fantastic. He's just fantastic. His inner dialogue of just how much he hates life and how horrible the day is. Oh my God. I know it sounds stupid for people who have not read this story and are thinking, why would I want to read? How can somebody who's a, he's a deformed, a mutilated, doesn't have teeth, can barely walk, um, looks 70, but he's 30. Torture. <laughs> How could this be the your favorite character of all time? He literally tortures people for a living. He's just fantastic. <laughs> Enough good things cannot be said about Sandang Lakta. Um, I specifically loved the interaction he had with West at the end of the book, where he asks West, why didn't you come see me? And West says, I did. And that was really cute. And he's, Glockta's like, okay, okay, we can be friends. That's fine. Uh, that interaction is fantastic. Um, Glockta in general, he's the most, he's like our eyes into the politics of the story. And the union is obviously this corrupt political system, which is hilarious. I love it. Um, the way, the mirror that it ha holds up to society is fantastic in this story. And the closed council and the open council, fantastic. Love that. Genius. And the being the eyes of the politics of the story uh, between Archlector Salt and Morovia, and that dynamic where you're dealing with this political battle in between the characters, very, very fantastic. Obviously, the war efforts are heating up, um, and we do... Oh, I forgot about Three Trees. I forgot about the Dogman and Three Trees up, the, up in the north. Um, obviously, the Northerners, Logan's crew... They're an interesting bunch. They're an interesting group. Dao is Dao, and you don't love Dao exactly because he's Black Dao. Um, I love Weakest. Weakest is my favorite, but he died, so that's sad. <laughs> um, but I loved Weakest. Weakest was the best. Um, Dogman's great. Three Trees is awesome. Uh, that's a, it's a good group. I love, I like the banter and the enjoyment. It feels like the classic, like, fellowship group that you get going. Um, and in book two, apparently, we're gonna have the actual fellowship, where we have, uh, the main crew taking a trip together. la di da let's go on a trip. Um, and I'm excited to read that, uh, and there's a bunch of books in the series oh my god i cannot wait i love this one so much and i cannot wait to share the rest of them with you guys think tell me what you guys thought what did you guys like what did you dislike am i wrong about everything is glock to horrible does me liking him make me horrible it does i know it i don't care though because he's fantastic why not all all of us just go hand in hand sit under a tree and just talk about dead bodies floating up and floating down by the docks good times Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next in the next video. Bye.